TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi warns Israel may be forced to launch yet another offensive military operation in Gaza. The United Nations Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Venislant, urges Hamas to cease its hostilities against Israel. China voices support for what it calls Palestine's just cause for fighting for its national rights. The Israeli Defense Forces are forced to contend with six active theaters from which continuous and unrelenting threats are threatening the security of the Jewish state and the peace of Jerusalem. Speaking at a ceremony marking the arrival of Nitzachon, a fourth South 6 class corvette from Germany to Israel's naval port in Haifa, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi highlighted the paramount necessity to continually enable the qualitative edge of the Israeli military. בביטחון אזרחי מדינת ישראל, ועדים לאחרונה לחיכוך הגובר, בו גם, לצערי הרב, איבדנו את לוחם הגב, סמל ראשון, בראל חדריה שמואלי, זיכרונו לברכה. In light of rising tensions along Israel's southern front with the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, General Kochavi highlighted that unless the Islamist terror group in Gaza seizes their hostilities, Toward the residents of southern Israel, the IDF may be forced to launch yet another offensive military operation. כל עוד יימשכו פעולות הטרור מכל סוג שהוא. שקט וביטחון יאפשרו שיפור בתנאים האזרחיים, אבל הפרות סדר וטרור יובילו לתגובה חריפה עד כדי מבצע. כבר עם סיום מבצע שומר החומות החל צה"ל להיערך למערכה נוספת. שיפרנו ואנחנו ממשיכים לשפר את כושר התקיפה שלנו ברצועה ומשפרים את התוכניות המבצעיות. אם השקט בדרום לא יישמר, לא נהסס, לא נהסס לצאת למערכה נוספת. ואם נידרש לה, אני יודע שכל הזרועות, וביניהם זרוע הים, ארוחה ומוכנה לקחת חלק במערכה, כפי שלקחה בהצלחה יתרה במבצע שומר החומות. In response to the warnings leveled by the top Israeli officer, Hamas's military wing, the Zaldin al-Qassam brigades, released a statement in which they claim to be prepared for yet another round of hostilities. Turning to the United Nations headquarters in New York, where a Security Council session on the Middle East was held last night, during which the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Venislant, warned of the tense situation between Israel and the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip. Over three months have passed since the deadly escalation between Israel and militants in Gaza, and the situation remains tense. In response, the UN continues to engage with all sides to maintain calm and provide urgent assistance to the Gaza's residents. Concerning level of violence continued throughout the occupied Palestinian territory during the reporting period. In Gaza, Militants launched incendiary balloons on multiple occasions and one rocket towards Israel. 
The rocket was intercepted, causing no damage, while the balloons caused several fires in areas around the Strip. In retaliation, Israeli defense forces fired some 37 missiles against Hamas targets, resulting in damage but no injuries. The UN envoy further highlighted the violent tries that are orchestrated by Hamas along the Gaza perimeter or security barrier with Israel. He noted that at the height of one of the protests, hundreds of Palestinians that approached the barrier hurled stones and improvised explosive devices toward Israeli troops who responded by opening fire toward the rioters. As a result, 51 Palestinian rioters, including 25 children, were injured, and one man and a 12-year-old child were killed. During the referred to incident, one Israeli Special Operations Service member was also killed when a so-called Palestinian demonstrator shot him in the head from point blank. Consequently, when Aslant urged the referred to demonstrators to protest peacefully, and urged both sides to avoid the targeting of children who participate in the riots. I reiterate that children must never be targeted nor put in harm's way and call on all sides to show restraint, avoid provocations at the fence and keep the protest peaceful. I must also see Hamas and other armed groups stop the launching of incendiary devices, rockets and mortars, and end the military buildup. The UN Special Envoy, who is stationed at the United Nations Observer's Headquarters in Jerusalem, further noted that Israel has been easing restrictions on the Gaza Strip, yet emphasized that these actions were not enough. Tor Venislaw, who also serves as the UN Secretary General's personal representative to the PLO and Palestinian Authority, voiced outrage over an incident earlier this month in which Hamas prevented a team of UN bone disposal experts from inspecting a school of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, commonly referred to as UNRWA. According to Venislant, Hamas forcefully took over the UNRWA school after inspectors were called to inspect the premise that, according to subsequent findings, included underground infrastructure and storage facilities for rocket launching systems and numerous rockets. Following the takeover of an UNRWA school by Hamas, the agency reiterated in an 11 August statement that its installations are inviolable at all times. The agency protested the takeover and condemned the existence and potential use of structure including tunnels under its premises in the strongest possible terms. While the school was subsequently vacated by Hamas, such actions undermined the inviolability and neutrality of UNRWA premises and compromised the safe return of children to their schools on time. <coughs> UNRWA and UNRWA are working to remove any remaining unexploded ordinances as soon as possible. Despite the demonstrated and repeated abuse by Hamas of UNRWA schools, and other UN facilities in the Gaza Strip, the United States is adamant of the crucial need to further bolster the organization. Following the U.S. announcement of another $136 million in humanitarian assistance to UNRWA's operations in the region last month, the United States again urges other member states to make financial commitments as well. As we saw with the recent return of 290,000 students to UNRWA schools in Gaza, UNRWA services are a lifeline to many Palestinian refugees. It is worth mentioning that while there is seemingly consensus over the need to ratchet up transfer of humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip, which Israel is complying to, Members of the international community are becoming increasingly vocal vis-à-vis -vis attributions of responsibility for the latest cycles of violence. Let me start by once again reinforcing the need to prevent a further escalation in violence in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories and to restore calm. We share concerns about the recent tensions in Gaza 
and call on all parties to take steps to avoid exacerbating tensions and to maintain the cessation of hostilities. The United Kingdom condemns unequivocally Hamas's indiscriminate attacks against Israel, including the use of incendiary balloons. We call upon Hamas and other terrorist groups to permanently end their rocket fire against Israel. In contrast to the unequivocal condemnation by the United Kingdom, China voiced support for what it called Palestine's just cause for fighting for its national rights. As a sincere friend of the Palestinian people, China supports Palestine's just cause for fighting for its national rights and the establishment of a fully sovereign and independent Palestinian state based on its 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. We will continue to work with the international community to preserve peace and justice, uphold fairness and conscience, practice true multilateralism, and promote a comprehensive, reasonable and just settlement of the Palestinian question, as well as the early realization of lasting peace in Palestine, Israel and the wider region. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the people of the continent of Asia in prayer for their salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.